Hi everyone, Matthew Brewer here, a registered associate marriage and family therapist uh, that is in a private practice in downtown San Francisco, currently accepting clients. And I wanted to make a video today about a short introduction to a variety of different topics. And on those topics, you can find some other related videos that go more in depth. So let's get started. Topic number one is neurogenesis, which is the creation of new brain cells. This was not previously thought to happen in adults, but it has been found uh, to occur in the hypothalamus where learning and memory is involved. Along with this concept is neuroplasticity, which is the linking up of different neural networks through the dendrites and axons of neurons. Furthermore, there is a concept called neurobics, which is the exercising of our brain in new and novel ways which can stimulate brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which helps in the production of new uh, brain cells through that neurogenesis. So to find out more, do check out some other videos. Topic number two is positive psychology, which is the study of human well-being and flourishing, uh, first proposed by Martin Seligman in his book Authentic Happiness, and then later with his follow-up sequel, Flourishing. This um, approach to psychology looks at not only this approach to psychology looked at the factors that benefit human well-being and among these the acronym PERMA is used which stands for positive emotion and pleasure that's important to have in our life uh, E for engagement to be involved in passions and hobbies that create a sense of flow which is a concept coined by Mihai, Six Sense Mihai, and R stands for relationships, to be connected to people, to have social groups. M stands for meaningful, to have purpose in life and to have a sense of direction. And the A stands for achievement, which is to set goals and work towards them and achieve things that were previously difficult. And the more of these factors that you can have in your life, the happier and the better you'll feel. Topic number three is mental health for gay men. This is based on my experience at the San Francisco AIDS Foundation Stonewall Project. One thing that I think many gay men struggle with is feeling connected. There's often a sense of isolation and having a hard time making and maintaining friends. I think there's a lot of reasons for this, um, particularly the challenges of growing up gay and potentially being closeted and not being able to be our true and authentic self and having to create a persona that we use to interact with people in a superficial way. So part of the struggle here is to find who we really are and relate to people in that way. An additional problem for gay men is the common use of substances during sex, including crystal meth um, and, and other different variety of party drugs that facilitate this connection, but in a way that is you know, somewhat altered and it's not in a sober state. So then when one does come down, one feels less connected and a need to get high again in order to connect with other people. Uh, Johan Hari contends that connection is the opposite of addiction, and that instead of having a war on drugs, we should be singing love songs to drug users, for their lack of connection often contributes to their drug use. Topic number four is integral. What does this term mean? First off, in its broadest sense, it means holistic, comprehensive, taking everything into account. In its most narrow sense, it's based on an integral yoga philosophy by this philosopher sage Sri Aurobindo, who was in some ways a spiritual founder of the graduate school that I went to. So his particular sense of the word integral means a process of unifying and harmonizing the different parts of who one is and to become more in touch with the divine. What other thinkers have done with this term, and its related term transpersonal, is try in a very systematic way to take into account all the different human systems of growth and development, whether spiritual or psychological, and putting them together in a spectrum of psycho-spiritual development. This is evolutionary, developmental, and there are many different ways to move along the spectrum of growth and expand your consciousness, including having an integral life practice. Stay tuned for more information. 
So topic number five is ILP, or what is an integral life practice? This approach to existing in the world takes into account your body, your heart, your shadow, your mind, your soul, and your spirit. So if you were to go to an integral hardcore person like me as a counselor, I'd want to look at your body. Are you getting sleep? How's your diet? Are you exercising at all? Because that biological, physiological foundation is important from a bottom-up perspective for your mental health. Your heart is all that emotional stuff. What is getting trapped? What is not being expressed? If it's anger or grief and helping to get those emotions moving and flowing, the very word itself meaning that. The shadow are those parts of your personality that you've disowned and they can be positive or negative attributes. And so that can be a process of re-owning your shadow. The mind is all those intellectual things. Sometimes there are core beliefs or patterns of thought that are circling around and around. And so that's where cognitive behavioral therapy might step in and examine some of those uh, cognitive distortions. Soul, working with that, is finding your individuality, what makes you unique. And this can often be through art therapy, expressive movement, drama, whatever brings out your passion for life. And spirit takes into account your religious and spiritual beliefs or meditation, mindfulness, anything that helps connect you to the universe and to other people in a wider scope than might be thought in traditional therapy. So please do give Integral a try.